What's up everybody? My niece recently brought her laptop to me. She has this dreaded system boot error. Generally when you see this, this is indicative of some kind of hard drive problem. It may be a complete hard drive failure all the way down to just a loose cable. In this video, I'm going to show you some of the things that you can do to troubleshoot this issue and potentially fix this problem if you are encountering this issue. When I would boot the computer, this is the error that I would get. And when you see this error, this is an indication of something wrong with the hard drive. It can be something physically wrong, meaning anything from a loose cable, but it could be much worse and could mean that the hard drive has failed on a physical level and must be replaced. Or it can be a logical failure, meaning that there is some kind of corruption on there that is keeping the operating system from booting in some way or another. The first thing you can try when you encounter this error is just pulling any USB sticks from your computer and try to reboot it. Maybe it's trying to boot off of a USB stick, and that is one of the first troubleshooting methods you can employ to try and solve this error. The next thing I would do would be to check a cable, maybe reseat the drive. Also, while you're checking those connections, don't forget to check the connections on the motherboard itself. Whenever I see this problem and I can't get it fixed right away, I always immediately try to boot with a Linux Live USB stick and try to back up any kind of files that I would want to keep from the installed Windows operating system. It's important to act fast with a dying hard drive because a drive that is only mostly dead can become fully dead pretty quickly. But bear in mind there's pretty much nothing you can do for a completely physically dead hard drive besides replace it. If you have any indication that a drive is failing, back up the essential files on that hard drive immediately. I already had a Linux Live USB stick lying around from one of the previous videos that I did. In this case, it's a Zorin OS Live USB. If you want to see how I made this particular USB stick, you can watch that video right here. So the first thing I tried to do was open the file manager down here and browse to the Windows disk on this machine. And it's not a good sign because I don't see that Windows drive showing up at all. And I see the file system disk here. This file system is the USB stick that this operating system is running off of. But before I completely give up on any file retrieval, I'm going to run Gparted Partition Manager and see if I can see the Windows drive at all. Okay, so in Gparted we have Dev SDA, and when I hit this, if there were any other disks detected in the system, we would see them drop down here, and we got no such luck. So that's a pretty strong indicator to me that the Windows drive is 100% physically dead. If the drive were just logically dead, we could probably retrieve the files, reformat the drive, reinstall Windows, or repair the install, and be good to go without spending any money. Unfortunately, every indication that I have with this drive is that it is indeed physically dead, so the only option I'm left with right now is to replace the physical drive itself. So I'm going to shut this down, I'm going to go hit the interwebs, and order a new hard drive. After consulting my niece and finding out what she wanted, whether she wanted more storage or a faster system, she opted for the faster system. So I ordered this solid state hard drive off of eBay. Now she will have less storage space with this hard drive, but the system will operate much faster than it did with the one terabyte spinning platter hard drive that was previously in this laptop. All right, so I got a solid state hard drive here. Installing this thing should be pretty simple and pretty straightforward. All we have to do is open up the hard drive access panel on the back of the laptop and... Oh no. Okay, here comes a rant. So back in the day, they used to put access panels on the bottom of these laptops so you could get to the hard drive, which we clearly see is right here. We see the outline of the thing. How hard would it have been to put an access panel right there? They also used to design access panels so that you could get to the RAM and the battery to quickly replace both of those. This one does not have those access panels. Somebody, in their infinite wisdom, decided that it would be a good idea to follow Apple's playbook and start making things more complicated to get into. So to do something as simple as replacing a hard drive or replacing the battery or upgrading RAM, now we gotta take this entire thing apart to get into it that way. So fun fun, what a bunch of ridiculous nonsense. Alright, my rant's over. Complaining about this isn't going to get the laptop upgraded, so let's just tear into this thing. There are screws all over the bottom here. They got these little rubber covers covering up the screws, so we need to pop those out. Okay, now it's just a matter of loosening up these screws. Keep in mind which screws come from which holes, because some of them are going to be longer than others. 
As a matter of fact, this is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to mark which screw came out of which hole. I can always feel around later and guess and try to get them back in the right spot that way. But you know what old Jack Burton always says, work smart, not hard. So you can see the two screw sizes here. That's a long one and that's a short one. I'm going to make this hole L for long and this one S for short. All right, so I got all the screws out of there. I started out naming them long and short, but as it turns out, there are some that are even longer. So I put a double L here for double long or really long. Now instinct would tell us that since we've got all of the screws out and since the hard drive is right here, we should be able to just pop this plastic piece off of the bottom and that should give us access to the hard drive. Unfortunately, instinct is being thrown to the wind right here. That is not how you access this thing at all. What you actually have to do is flip it over and then you have to pry the top off to get at it this way. So I found a little pry tool like this to get started should be pretty good. And then a credit card to pop it the rest of the way out should work just fine. Just don't force anything. Take it easy and slow. When you get to the point that you're almost done popping the top off, be really careful because there are ribbon cables under there and you don't want to damage them. My apologies for this next part, but the footage that I recorded of the ribbon cable removal came out unusable. I actually recorded this repair a couple weeks back. Unfortunately, I have already given this laptop back to my niece, so I can't go back and re-record this section. If you have never removed a ribbon cable from a laptop, I highly recommend that you Google how to do that. There are plenty of videos showing how you can do that. It's not a difficult process, but it is tedious. And if you've never done it before, it's something that you don't want to mess up. Okay, so I got the top off and as you can see, this thing is really, really dusty. So before I proceed, I'm gonna get the air compressor and blow this thing out. I'll be back in a minute. All right, so now that I got the dust bunnies somewhat blown out of here and I've got it cleaned up a bit, this is the hard drive. And this is what we actually wanna replace. So it sets in a tray and it looks like there's just this one screw holding it in place here. The rest of the screws feed in from the bottom and hold it all in place when we put it all back together. But we remove that one screw and then this tray comes out. I hope you can see it, but this is a SATA connection here. And the replacement hard drive is also a SATA. So we need to pull this housing off to put the new hard drive in the housing so that it will fit in here. It's got these four little screws on the sides holding it in. Two on this side and two on the other side. I'll just take those out and set them off to the side. Now that the four screws are loosened up, the hard drive just pops out like this. So we need to remember that it came out top up and SATA connections facing that way. So when we put this new one in, we need to remember that top up SATA connections facing that way. Now we just put those four little screws back in to put it all back together. All right, here we go. It's back in and we just slide it in and it goes in just like that. You'll see that the SATA connections can only go in one way. Don't ever force anything. We want to make sure that these holes line up with the holes underneath. And we got our one screw that goes back in here just like that. So we're ready to screw it back down into place. Now it can all go back together. So carefully put your ribbon cables back into place and don't kink them. And with the ribbon cables back in place and locked down, the only thing there is to do now is press this down into place. Make sure you don't force it. Just firmly go around the edge. Once everything snaps back into place, close the lid, flip it over and start putting the screws back in. Now, if this were my laptop, I would probably choose a lightweight Linux distribution to install on this machine. My niece, however, is not a Linux user, so I'm gonna to have to restore Windows 10 on this machine. I'm gonna get the Windows 10 installation media creation tool. I'm gonna to leave a link to this download page in the description below. Here, we just hit the download tool, and after that's finished downloading, we're gonna insert the USB stick of at least eight gigabytes in capacity into our PC and click the mediacreationtool.exe. And this is gonna walk us through creating a Windows USB installer. Here we have two options. We can upgrade this PC or we can create an installation media. We wanna create installation media. I'm going to uncheck use the recommended options for this PC. Here I'm gonna leave the language as default, addition also as default, and change the architecture to both 64 and 32 bit, and hit next. Now we have the option to burn this to a USB flash drive or create an ISO file. 
If you were going to burn this to a CD or DVD, you would choose ISO file, but we want to write this directly to a USB flash drive. So we're going to hit next. I'm going to overwrite the Zorin OS USB flash drive that I used earlier. I don't really need it right now. So I'll choose drive F. Now whichever drive you choose is going to be completely overwritten. So make sure you do choose the proper USB drive in this step. Now I'm going to hit next and this process can take a little while. So just hang out and be patient or go do something else and come back when this is finished. When it says your USB flash drive is ready, click finish and remove the USB stick from your computer and plug it into the PC that you want to restore. Okay, now that we plugged in that Windows 10 installation USB stick into the laptop, I'm going to power on the laptop. And we know that the new hard drive that we just installed is empty. So we see here that the laptop is booting and we see Windows installation choices. That means that the laptop has successfully booted from the USB stick we created. And here is our Windows 10 installation screen. We have the option to repair the computer or to install now. There's nothing on this hard drive to repair, so we're going to just go ahead and do an installation from scratch. We're going to install Windows only, and we're going to install it to this drive right here. That's the hard drive that we just installed. Here we see Cortana. That's a good thing, dare I say it. It just means the installation is going as planned. All right, so this is where, if you have an online account, you would sign in with your Microsoft account. So at this point, it's safe to assume that we have successfully installed Windows. I could give this laptop back to my niece now and be pretty confident that she could set the rest up herself. But real quick, I just like to do a quick look around and make sure everything looks okay. I generally check the time settings and make sure Windows is activated. And I like to make sure all of the device drivers have installed and the hardware is working properly. Now personally, to finish things up, if this were my PC, I would install all of the software that I would plan on using on this machine, and then I would make a system image. You can do this through Windows, but I personally use Clonezilla. I have a video on how to use Clonezilla right here. Okay, so that may have been tedious in some spots, but I think overall it's a pretty simple fix and a lot better than going out and spending money on a new computer. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of my future content uploads or check out one of my other videos. Also, leave a like. It really helps the channel grow. That's it for now, and I'll see you next time.